हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू स्टेट करंट अफेयर सीरीज विद डॉक्टर विवेक राणा आई होप योर जीएस प्रिपरेशन इज ऑन राइट ट्रैक वी आर बैक विद अनदर शॉर्ट लेक्चर ऑन मेन हेडलाइंस फ्रॉम लीडिंग न्यूज़पेपर सो विल बी डीकोडिंग अ टॉपिक व्हिच हैज रेमिफिकेशंस इन क्लीन एनर्जी इन एनवायरमेंट बट आल्सो इट इज अ यू कुड से वर्ड अफेयर थीम सेक्शन एज वेल लिंक्ड विद ज्योग्राफी सो विल बी डीकोडिंग द ग्रेट इथोपियन रेनेसा दैन now as the name suggests it is related to africa it's a landmark project which has made headlines for all the right reasons so it was recently inaugurated and it was celebrated in africa as well as at global perspective as well because we all know currently any pro infrastructure project which is supporting the larger cause of clean energy or renewable energy is always a welcome move and we have seen africa has been a slow progressor in this uh, domain because of its developmental aspirations but nevertheless it's trying to catch up and contribute as a whole so you can see it's quite a lavish scale dam which has been built over with the lifeline of africa the nile river so let's see what are the facts which you need to mug up from this perspective a little background uh, of this news because the prime minister of ethiopia abi ahmed formally launched this landmark project and it has touted it as the greatest achievement in history of the black race so basically the, there is a lot of symbolism also involved in this inauguration and as you could see on your screen they are touting it as one of the greatest uh, you could say development of modern africa as modern history of africa because even if we see in india's history as well initially when we inaugurated bhakra nangal hirakun which were respectively you know the major infrastructure projects of post independent india and they were at that time one of the highest and largest dam of india similar way africa today is celebrating the similar kind of milestone because once you create some infrastructure project which is directly linked to power generation there is a scope that your economy might just uh, start moving in the right direction rather than crawling because we all know right form of energy mix is critical to any country's development and africa ra railing from poverty as well as you could say climate vagaries so basically this could be a blessing for not only ethiopia but the adjoining region as well and why they are saying greatest achievement not because africa has not built hydroelectric projects it's just that the conditions while building this massive dam were quite uh, testing for human race there is the site is located quite at remote region so basically to mobilize the raw materials as well to build the dam it required uh, next level of you could say expertise and the temperature we all know at times the capital of ethiopia is addis ababa at times it was touted as the hottest place in the africa even though no longer it exists there are other depressions as well so basically in short we can say the climatic conditions were quite challenging and also the working hours of the people involved in were quite uh, you could say uh, tough and they uh, cross their human limits so the difficulty is always a blessing whenever such situations are there so we can laud their uh, effort in creating this uh, wonderful project which is most or less likely to be a blessing and coming to the other synonyms of the similar project this project in short would be called jerd because it stand for grand ethiopian renaissance dam otherwise original name and it was construction was started it was called millennium dam because uh, the preparation started right away in the new millennium and it's also known as hidase dam and type of dam is it's a gravity dam on blue nile river so here is the basic fact which you need to mug up from state services point of view they might try to confuse you whether this dam is on white nile or blue nile so you just need to understand this is largest dam of africa is on blue nile river coming to the another factual part what kind of energy it will generate that they are claiming that it's their largest hydroelectric project it will be 5.15 gigawatts and this is a quite um, a large amount of energy which is uh, will not only help ethiopia but also regional uh, country so it's because of its large energy generating capacity it has been officially claimed now as the largest hydroelectric power plant 
in entire Africa. And also at global stage, it is uh, now uh, has made its entry in the top 20 largest in the world. From the geography perspective, there is no harm in going through the Asia's largest and global largest as well. Coming to the significance, this project was completed more or less uh, in a decade. Uh, it started construction in way back in 2011 with the initial name of Millennium Dam. And in 2023, more or less they had completed and formal uh, inauguration has just taken this week. So the main purpose while they were conceptualizing and building this project was straightforward the electricity generation, moreover the clean energy generation because Ethiopia is one of the countries whenever we see human development index, poverty index, hunger index, its ranking are quite dismal. So basically it's not that South Africa or Egypt like a prosperous country in Africa has built this dam. The odds were quite against Ethiopia when it started this project. So basically, they are hopefully this will uh, help in building Ethiopia better by meeting their energy needs. And also they have a potential to export uh, electricity to the neighboring regions because 5.51 gigawatt is a substantial amount of energy. And uh, by completing this project, uh, you could say in a decade, we can say that it is a quite a symbol of their self-reliance capabilities, also the development and regional influence. So basically in that particular belt, Ethiopia would be looked upon as the right example and it will uh, help it to convey itself better in those African Union because we have seen both India and China touting being the voice of Global South and they need some strong players in Africa as well who could assert themselves better. So basically, it once you build such massive project and become the signature of all the current, uh, you could say, nations, it helps in your bargaining powers as well. So whenever something positive is achieved, there is rarely, uh, you could say, uh, escapes criticism from some quarter or the another because every success story has something to counter. So basically now Ethiopia has inaugurated this dam and has made it a spectacle by touting as the one of the greatest development of the black race or the biggest hydro project of Africa. But there is one country which is quite irritated with this particular development and that country has been objecting to this development ever since its inception or conceptualization and it's a strong country like Egypt. Now why is Egypt uh, not satisfied with this particular project because more or less this Blue Nile is central to Egypt's development and even it has said that it is the existential threat to their water security because once you construct the dam there is every possibility that the, uh, the countries which are in downstream they often complain that their share of water would be diverted they might be subjected to you could say whims and fences of the country which has built the dam as per their convenience without taking into them consensus and historically also there was a treaty it was clearly mentioned that if any country tries to build such dam in future it should first consult Egypt only then go forward whereas in this case Ethiopia ignored uh, these particular issues. So we can say not all is uh, fray in this thing and we can see a con regional conflict developing in Africa is quite prone to such misadventures which they regret eventually but hopefully the better sense to prevail and hopefully this project would be in news for all the right reasons. So uh, Egypt because it currently depends on almost 90% of its water requirement on Blue Nile that's why we call uh, the Nile the lifeline of Egypt. Uh, otherwise, the other countries which are directly or indirectly related to Nile Basin are overall satisfied or not raising to you and cry about this dam. They have supported this initiative and the other country which directly, if you look at the map geographically, as you could see in your last slide, it's the Sudan which directly is coming in the pathway of this river. So Sudan, other than Egypt, is another downstream nation of the Blue Nile. It is all not raising the issue. It's saying that only 
through Egypt that uh, inflammatory content relating to dam has at times made them little anxious but overall they feel that it's a right project and they are within their right to construct this dam. So Ethiopia denies that Ethiopia's version is straightforward. They say that it would not have any major negative impact on downstream, downstream water flow and also that dam in fact might help in increasing water flow to Egypt by reducing evaporation rate on Lake Nasir. We all know uh, you need to mug up a little bit of geographical uh, structures around Egypt, uh, Sudan and Ethiopia and that you will easily find Lake Nasir, you will find Aswan Dam. So basically this is a topic which they are not going to frame a statement based question. They will only ask broadly which are the main dams, what are the countries associated with them or what are the rivers associated with them. So basically it will be a factual question if at all it comes and you should be clear about the way. So make sure while going through these basic facts you also open your atlas book and just scroll through the Africa political as well as physical map and these region in new specifically Sudan, Egypt and Ethiopia, they should be uh, covered. So I hope this short session on great Ethiopian Renaissance da dam was a useful one and also go through the list of you could say clean energy projects which are the major projects of Africa because India is pitching high on and solar energy as well and you will see some of the big projects of even solar power coming up in near future in Africa because Africa is central to the vision of both international solar alliance as well as one sun one world one grid and uh, in this particular case the, so the intent is clear that they also want to develop clean sorts of energy in a major larger than life scale so we should be we should admire their effort and hopefully support as well so we'll be back soon with another current affair lecture uh, even though only few of you might be following this series as of now but eventually if you are targeting some state services exam you will find these topics and the list of topics which we are covering more or less uh, in the current section so uh, thank you very much have a nice day